on my other one, my, my clip on mic. Uh oh. Good morning. Oh. Good morning, everybody. You want to take your seat? I'll say Natasha too. <laughs> Good morning. It's lovely to see you. It's lovely to see these, f these uh, chairs getting filled up. It's really nice. It's really, really nice. So welcome. I'm going to start with opening prayer, and then we're going to look at news and notes. Dear Heavenly Father, this is a new day that belongs to you. Lord, as we come today and gathered here together, firstly, we acknowledge that you have called us to be here. Secondly, Heavenly Father, if we know you, we want to say thank you by your blood. By the shedding of your blood, we can sit here, not judged, but set free. So, Lord, if you don't learn anything today, maybe hold on to them truths. You have brought us here, and that we are saved and redeemed. But, Lord, what is great, furthermore, that you're a God who is living, and you want to speak to us by your Holy Spirit. So, Lord, I, I hope and pray that everyone can be in unison today, that we say, Holy Spirit, we welcome you today. We welcome you to counsel us, to expose some places that maybe we don't want to go, but we know you're a God of love. Lord, that's one thing, Lord, we want to hold on to, that you are a God of love. You do not condemn those you love. But, Lord, we know in the last days you will be judging people. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you that we're under your grace. And, Lord, may we rejoice today in our worship to give you thanksgiving for that. And may we be open to receive and to listen to your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. There are news and notes that have been given out today for some of or, or leaflet was giving out, so some of the stuff will be on there. We're also for members, and if, and if there are people who want to be added to our list, our email list, which we give out every week, let uh, come to me and, and I can add you on, and we can then and then you can find out. I'm not going to go through all the notices because that's why we've got all the information. And also, if you want to look, I put on or sometimes highlights. Like if some of you may have seen this week. There, I put last week's service on, and it wasn't all of it. Sometimes I need to put highlights of the service because I want to encourage people, if you want to whole service, come. Come and see the whole service. So one thing I do want to highlight is there is going to be a alpha, not an alpha, sorry, a tier fund quiz night. And is it 20? Does anyone know the date again? Forgive me. Thank you. There we go. The 20th of November. See Paul and Mark, and I want to thank Paul and Mark at the moment for actually Mark last week or a couple of weeks ago helped out, and Paul today is at the back, and I, I, I want to welcome Paul. I know you can hear me, Paul, so I want to say thank you for what Paul is doing at the back, and I'll be training him again. Hopefully, I'll be out soon, and just bear with me. I know, I know, I'd love to be out here in the congregation, but I just need to train, and once I've trained people, then I can sit out here and know that everything is done in safe hands. So I'll be, you'll be seeing me come in and out again. I do apologise, but we're just in training at the moment so that is the quiz night so please can you sign up because what we want to do is have it here at the church and we're thinking also about refreshments so 20th November doesn't sound it doesn't sound like it's tomorrow but as you know days go very quickly so please if you know and you can bring your own team I've heard you can bring your own team if you've got one if you're thinking I can bring some people it could be a good time to even a witness to bring people in the church we're not going to be obviously witnessing but just to bring people into the church For some people they've not been into a church so this could be a time you tell people we're having a quiz night and we're, and we're fundraising would you like to come for, for tier fund uh, so please make sure you, you come to this uh, they're supporting the, f the tier fund this Thursday if I'm right the home group isn't it it says see Paul and Mark for details Thank you. So see Paul and Mark for details. Uh, home group this week for, for Phil. Thank you. We've also got home group, Winnie's and James. Have you have any? And when is your starting? Perfect. Good. So see, please, Jean, if you can at the back. So we have Tuesday night. Is it a, n a night time? Yes, 7th, 8 o'clock. So we have Tuesday night. We have a Thursday night and we have a Friday night. So it's really no and if you think I can't do any of them, please come and see me and start up another uh, another a, a house group. 
I'm now going to turn it over to James. I think that is all the notices. And again, if there's any other notices you need to do, please, notices goes in by Friday. So if you've got any notices, please put it in by Thursday night at the latest. Or Wednesday, sorry, thank you. Sorry about that. Wednesday, and then we can put it in, in the notices. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6 states, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you that you never leave us and that we can know your love even when we're in the hardest of times, Father. And we just pray that you can help us forget any, any difficulties that we've had this week and leave them at the foot of the cross, Father. And we can just think about you. And let's, let us praise you this morning with open hearts, Father. Amen. So we're going to come into a time of worship. First of all, we're going to sing Praise is Rising and then followed by the Splendor of the King. So please do stand if you'd like to. Father, we can all come to you 
Father, we just thank you for that goodness, Father. Psalm 28, verse 6 states, Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him, and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy, and with my song I praise him. So let's continue to praise with how great is our God. Father, and that from age to age you stand, Father, worthy of all of our praise. Please can you just help us to continue to worship you with our open hearts, Father, that we can give you goodness and thank thankfulness, Father, for everything that you do for us, Lord. Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat. So we're going to move into a time of celebrations. So this is where we think about anything that we've that's happened this week that we, we might be thankful for or 
anything we'd like to celebrate as a as a church does anything spring to mind for anybody or any birthdays or anniversaries let me know if you've got any birthdays or anniversaries this week do we have anything you can put your hand up if you do have one well I, I've got one it was very nice it was half term this week I'm sure a lot of us enjoyed our half term <laughs> it was nice to get some rest and uh, yeah and relax a bit so that was good yes Gail Thank you to Wendell for that super sewing. That's brilliant. Brilliant. Any, any, any other celebrations? No. Lovely. Okay, let's pray. Father, we just thank you for, for our celebrations, Father, and, and for half term this week for many of us. And what a great time just to, to relax and, and rest. And we just thank you that you give us that time to, to really reset ourselves, Father, and, and, and think about uh, our direction, Father, and, and where we stand, Father. So we just thank you for that time. And also we just thank you for the shoebox appeal, Father. And for, and for the great work that they do across the world, giving children a present at Christmas time, Father, that they can know that they're loved. And we just thank you for all of the preparation and, and things that people have done, whether they've donated or they've made a shoebox. We thank you to Wendy as well for her super, super knitting, Father, with those 30 gloves. We just thank you for her hard work as well, Lord. We lift all of these up to you, Father. Amen. I am not afraid. I am not afraid of the evil things I see. Even my own death will not put a scar in me. For you, my Lord, are always nearby and will always be until the day I die. I am not dismayed by the valley ahead, for I believe through it. I will be spirit led. For when the time comes for me to go on home, it will be the happiest day I have ever known. I am not afraid. I have nothing to fear. For Jesus, my heart, will comfort and cheer. So we're going to come into a time of worship. And we're going to sing sovereign over us. Do stand if you're able to.
are still to prosper. You have not forgotten us. You're with us in the fire and the flood. You're faithful forever. Perfect in love. sovereign over us father and in the valley you are faithful when we face the enemy father you you, you turn it for our good father when we're when we're fighting bad things father you turn it for your good father and for your glory and we just thank you that you do that lord in the valley you are faithful father and father i just thank you for all of the children that we have here this morning lord it's so great to see them and we just pray for as they go out to the back now that they can really hear your message, Father. And we just thank you for all of the preparation for Sandra and for everything that's going in the back, Father. We just lift them up to you. Amen. 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 So for the children, if you'd like to go out. I'm now going to hand over to Samuel. morning. It's time for matters for prayer. Um, Job, when he went through his affliction, he would tell his wife, is it only good that we should praise God when everything is going well with us? We shall always praise God when things are going well or bad. That's why we sang this morning, that the Lord will always be with us even when we are going through the valley of the shadow of death, even when we go through the fire. We have a God that promises that. He did not say that there will not be problems in your life. But he says, I will be with you. I'll give you the grace. I'll give you the wisdom. I'll give you the peace on how to maneuver that situation. Jesus promised that in all things I have overcome. In other words, I've taken up the sting out of the pain that you may go through. So this morning, as we look at the matters for prayer, um, I just want to look at one scripture here. Uh, the Bible tells us in Romans 8.26, it says, In the same way the Spirit comes to help us in our weakness, because we do not know even what we should pray for. You know those moments when you're troubled and you just don't know what to do. You don't know what to pray for, not even how to pray. It says, But the Spirit himself pleads with our case and unexpressed go groans as we cry out to God. So in other words, the Holy Spirit is the one that leads us and guides us in that time of pain when you're confused and you're desperate for God to do something in your life. I wonder whether you have something that you want to cry to God for and just stand with you this morning. Grumble, please. At last, um, Nina's got an appointment to have her knee replaced. Um, it's next Wednesday, 3rd of November, in Hillingdon Hospital. And so pray for, obviously, the operation. It's quite a major operation, knee replacement. And, and she's not a youngster, so for her recovery. But also for Ken to be able to uh, cope with the change situation at home. Um, and for the family who are, as it were, trying to facilitate everything around this. So it's next Wednesday. November the 3rd for Nina's replacement knee at Hillingdon Hospital. Yeah, she, she, the reason they aren't here today is that she's had to go and do the COVID test at Hillingdon pre-op. Okay, pray for Nina that the knee, a knee operation, the Lord will be with the doctors and the surgeons who will conduct that operation. Yeah. Uh, prayer for three people after him. My friend's husband who's having an aortic valve fitted on Tuesday. Sorry, I said I didn't hear. 
Aftim, who's having an aortic valve fitted on Tuesday. Okay. And Sylvia, as lots of people know, who was a member of our church for many years for um, a quick um, healing for her broken ankle. And Trudy, who came here for a while, she slipped and broke her hip in the week. So um, for healing for those three people. And that's that they'll sense the presence of the Lord with them through their pain and uncertainty. Thank okay. you. Anybody else? Actually, my prayer is uh, for my son who passed away. Yep. And uh, I'm still having his ashes at home. Uh, we are praying for the journey to take him back home in Kenya. Thank you. Sorry, what's your, what's your name? I'd like to, my my, um, my granddaughter, her name's Chelsea, she sent me now that she has some um, degeneration from the her spine, it's gone, it's gone twisted, and she's supposed to have an operation, okay. about a seven and a half hour operation, and they're going to they're start putting in some things, putting in, in her spine, and I'm just praying for her, I'm going to pray for you can pray for her, so she have a miracle that her spine would be corrected. Sure. I mean, you know, she used, they said that she'd have to learn to walk again initially. You can see that side, the muscles and everything. So I just pray for a miracle. And pray for Chelsea. My, my granddaughter. What's her name again, sorry? Chelsea. Chelsea. Pray for Chelsea. There are a lot of operations. We need the God of miracles to arise and show himself mighty on their behalf. Julie? Um, just for a prayer for a very dear friend. Her name's also Julie. She's suffering with severe anxiety. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, anybody else? Can we also can we also add to prayer for Friday, for John, John's the funeral here. There's a funeral here on Fridays. So please pray for the family. Okay. Amen. The Bible also says in Psalm 145, verse 18. That the Lord is near to all who call on him, and to all who call on him in truth. And so we're going to call on the Lord because we know he's with us. And he has promised that when we call on him, he will answer us. <coughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you because, Lord, we know that we are weak in our flesh, O oh God. We call upon you because you promise, O oh Father, that when we call upon you, O oh Father, that you will hear us and you will answer us, Lord. Father, Lord, you said when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, Lord, you have promised that you will be with us, Heavenly Father. Lord, you've heard every cry, every prayer request this morning. Father, lots of operations, Heavenly Father. Lord, we cannot fix anything, oh God. You're a God of miracles, oh Father. And Father, I come before your throne room of grace and mercy, oh God, and loving kindness, oh Father. And I lift up Nina before you, Father, who is about to go through a knee operation, O oh God. God of miracles and the power. God who heals the sick. Oh, you who restores that which is broken, O oh God. I lift up Nina before you, Father. And I pray in the name of Jesus. The Lord, you will be with the doctors, Lord. You will be with the surgeons, Heavenly Father. Let the presence of the Holy Spirit, Lord, begin to feel that press in advance, O oh Father. And Lord, you will choose the people even who will do the surgery, Heavenly Father. The Lord Almighty, may they feel your presence in that room, O oh God. May they ask themselves, what was this? Indeed, we shall know that it was the hand of the Lord that was upon them that morning in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for Afton, Lord. We pray for Savior, O oh Father, Lord, who all those who have broken hips, Heavenly Father. Lord, I lift them before your grace, Lord. And I pray in the name of Jesus, the Lord, you may have mercy, O oh God. My God, may you arise in your power, in your goodness, and in your love. Lord, it is written unto us, O oh Lord, that your masses are new every morning. You are Jehovah Rapha, you heals, O oh Father. My God, my maker, Lord, you healed many sick people, Heavenly Father, in your time. Jesus Almighty, you said you've given us a name that's above every other name, O oh Lord. We know that every operation, Lord, is not above that name. We know that, O oh God, that the name of Jesus, Lord, is above every other name, is above every operation, is above anxiety, is above 
Father God, depression, oh Heavenly Father. And Lord, now we pray for every man, every woman, oh Father. And Lord, has been presented this morning, that Lord, we pray for them, oh God. Father, we pray in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, oh God. It is written, it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Therefore, Lord, I ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we know that it shall not be by the power of the doctors, but it shall be by your spirit, oh God. Therefore, Lord, we ask you to arise in your power and begin to do your wonders and your miracles, oh Father. Father, how shall we know that you are God Almighty? How shall we know your goodness? How shall you experience your loving kindness? Oh Lord, unless you arise and show yourself mighty on behalf of your people, Heavenly Father. We thank you, oh God, that you've heard us this morning. And Father, we pray in Jesus' name, the Lord, you will glorify yourself in every situation that has been presented this morning. And Father, we pray, oh God, for Julia, oh Father God, who is going through anxiety. You say we should not be anxious for anything. But Father, we pray that you are the God of peace. Uh, Prince of peace, may you arise and show yourself peaceful to this one. The peace that surpasses all understanding be upon her in the name of Jesus. And Father, Lord, we thank you for, for Sean's father, daughter, for our granddaughter, Lord. Father God, who is about to go undergo an operation in her spine, oh Father. Holy Spirit of God, you know exactly what to do. Oh God, Father, I ask by the power of your might, by that finger of God, I ask that Lord begin to transform that spine oh, to the glory of your name. I ask by the power of God that comes from on high, you God that answers by fire, may you arise, oh Father, and show yourself faithful to your word and who you are. It is written, oh Father, that your word is forever settled in heaven. And I thank you because you've heard us and you've answered us. And Lord, we praise you and give you all the glory and the praise in Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I go, uh, now Proverbs 19, 17 tells us that whoever gives to the poor lends to the Lord. Any time you give to somebody who is lacking something, it's as if you're lending to God, and God will repay you. Now, as you know, um, we have been, this church supports, I think, South Africa, is that? And China, and also China, we know the, the church is supporting those missions. And so, so recently, a new project came up, which we've been supporting. It's called uh, Goshen. It's a small school in Uganda. That's really, really struggling. I uh, just want to give you a bit of history about this. Um, as you, many of you who are still old enough to know that um, education sector in Uganda was used to be considered one of the best in sub-Saharan Africa. But because of devastation in the wars in 1970, many of you have heard of Idi Amin, uh, all the civil strifes and wars. The infrastructure and education institution was virtually run down everything was totally destroyed. This resulted in poor quality of education uh, as all the trained manpower decided to leave the country because of the wars. But also know, according to Article 6 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, that everyone is entitled to education. Uh, and actually, Article 34 also says that a child is entitled to basic education, which shall be the responsibility of the state uh, and the parents of the child. But unfortunately, the state has not met those standards. I just want to give you a little presentation um, through the love of, of God and, and the faithfulness of the saints. Um, there's a small school that's really struggling. Uh, as you notice here uh, from this slide, because of the gap in education, the children deep in the country they do not have any education at all. So a group of people, two or three, came together. They said, what can we do to help these young children just to be able to get an education? So with lack of funds, with the basic salary they had, they put up that little building there. Uh, now the children, about 50 children, can I have the next slide? If you notice here, it's called Goshen Nursery Primary School. They have nowhere to sit. They're all gathered uh, on the tree. And uh, thank God that this woman is a Christian, and she's just from her heart. She's doing the best. Uh, 
she does her best to destroy it and educate the children in a very Christian way. Most of the time, the younger ones will end up getting married or getting pregnant. So she will regret that. She will try them, she will power them to know about Christ and also educate them. The only problem they have is that they don't have books. sitting on the floor, they have no class, they have no textbooks, they have nothing to write on. Uh, uh, next slide, please. Yes, yes. from where they're very happy despite the little they have they're happy to rejoice in that um, because of what the church did and in, was it in April the church was able to provide three thousand pounds to this school and they started putting up a new building now because of your help this is the, the new place being built now they put up two three classes next next slide next slide that the workers are trying to put up a new uh, building. For the <laughs> and now this is just the, the structure that was being put up. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Just want to see the finished version. So this is uh, the three classrooms that actually put up from the money that the church gave, which is a better improvement from the other one that was there where kids were sitting on the floor. So this will provide three classrooms. Uh, now this has got windows. The other one didn't have windows in it. So this is the church. They are very grateful for the support they have received. That's the basic territories down there. And they're now getting new ch bit of chairs to sit on, somewhere to sit while they study. These are all things that have been delivered now. Um, this is the new, it's the finished version of the original one. It's being plastered now. So they still need more help um, if you, these are chairs that have been delivered a few weeks ago. Uh, just to also reassure you that um, this the country is still under, co they're still under lockdown and the kids have not been to school in almost a year. They're still stuck at home because of the COVID restrictions. Uh, also that is good in a way because it's they're able to reconstruct the building they have by the time the children come back in January, they'll have somewhere to sit and also be able to study without raining, rain coming on their heads as well. So they need textbooks, they need um, uh, the teachers, just to give you an idea uh, of how it happens. A teacher is paid £41 uh, every term uh, just to be able to teach these children. Um, now, to be able to finance that, what they've been doing, they've got the, the, the parents who are basically farmers, they, they, they don't have much to pay, um, it's basically £4.10 per term to educate every child you've seen there. That's how much it costs to be able to sustain them there. Every child there pays £4.10 a term, which is totally nothing compared to probably a cup of coffee that you have. So these kids need help. Uh, they need books, they need they need your help. And the teachers also, because of the, there's no income at all, the, the government cannot help. So um, these two Christians just came together and said, this is what we can do. But at the end of the day, they need to be paid to do that. And it costs 41 pounds every month, basically, to pay that teacher there, to be able to support these children. So whatever you can do to, to help these children, be appreciated. Come and see me or come and see Darren. Um, there's an opportunity probably next year. Those who want to travel, we can we can all f go together and you see what the money has been doing to these children. So I'll leave that to you and I pray that God will speak to you.
Okay, thank you very much, Samuel. So just before we move into a time of communion, we're going to move into a time of worship. And we're going to be singing Behold the Lamb. So please do stand if you'd like to. Jesus, our Redeemer. Jesus invites you here to be part of the people of God. Come to the table humbly, not because you have earned a place here, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love God and want to love God more. Come because Jesus first loved us and gave himself for us. Come because you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Come because you want to experience the mystery of God's grace. On the night he was handed over, 
Jesus had a meal with his friends. He took a loaf of bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. He said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's pray. Father, thank you for inviting us to break bread with you and with each other. Fill us and nourish us by your spirit with the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine and after giving thanks, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, remember me. Let us pray. God, our creator, thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, whose love pursues us our whole life long. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life to us in word and deed, even unto death, even death on a cross. Come, Holy Spirit, feed us with your love, that we may be filled with your power to love God with all our hearts and souls and minds. Amen.
Father, please help us to remember to ask for your help and for bravery in the situations that we face in our lives. Amen. Okay, so just before our talk, we're going to come into a time of worship. We're going to sing, Here I Am to Worship. I'll just read out the chorus. And here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether wonderful to me. Amen. 
to worship you, Father. You are worthy. You're altogether lovely, Father. And Father, we just lift up Darren as he comes to speak to us this morning, Father. And please help him to speak your word and your message for us this morning, Father, that you can give us receiving ears to listen to your word this morning, Father. Amen. Please do take a seat. microphone off there we go morning everybody Good morning. we're continuing on the series of the I am series last week we had the I am the way the truth and the life this week we will be talking about Jesus is the light of the world again it's very fitting isn't it that today some people will be celebrating the darkness and again uh, I Personally, I don't know why people do celebrate darkness. They say it's just a bit of fun. But I know even just on a basic level, I know my children, if they see ghosts and things, they get scared. What, even on a basic level, without a spiritual replica behind it, what profit is that? Even in our high school, even in our mid middle school, I was quite surprised at all these ghost things. And Simon Bay said, I don't want to go. And I said, good, we are children of the light. We're not going to celebrate any darkness, any scary things. Again, I won't go into it today because I, I want to more celebrate the light than the darkness. But if you want to come to me and say, well, it's just a bit of harmless fun, please talk to me. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what some of the people are doing tonight. Especially in Harrowner Hill, if you can. I know the church on Harrowner Hill, right on the top, used to have actually a 24-hour vigil on, 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 the, on this night because... Uh, Satanists believe around about 12 o'clock there's the spiritual world opens up and a lot of them go to the cemetery in Harrowner Hill and start asking the dead spirits to rise and they connect. So it's very real. This stuff is very, very real. So I hope you don't want any part of it. But if you say, but there's no fun in it, well, I can say, the, I didn't mention it, but um, the Baptist Church are having a light party tonight. So please... Take them there. We're not, we're not into sp children not having fun, but also having children. Book it on the website. Thank you. Yeah, Granville. Book it on the website. So you do have children, even trick-and-treating. I just think the concept as well of just begging <laughs> to strangers as well, it's just strange. Even that, knocking on a door and asking for candy of children. And, and you may say, well, it's, it's such a fun. Well, give me candy tomorrow. Why do we have to have a day where we can do trick or treat? It just doesn't make sense. So, obviously, my stance is I am not for Halloween, or not at all, not any of it. Because even trick or treat, if you go into it, does have ramifications of the satanic. It basic basic means you're if you do not when you're doing a trick or treat, which it means if you don't um, give the, tr the treat to the evil one, they will trick you. And it is, if you actually have a look, symbolically what it's done, there are spiritual ramifications around it. And if you hear special people coming out from the occult and say something, they'll tell you about this day. This is their Christmas. So this is very real. I don't want to get you worried about it, but I know sometimes ignorance is bliss. Ignorance, ignorance is bliss because we're not educated. And, uh, well, no one's told me that. Even, even some churches, which is terrible, will celebrate this festival. And I don't know why. We are not of the world. We should be apart from the world and be the light. So, so good. I'm glad we're getting an amen. I'm glad we're all un unified. If we're not unified, please come and see me. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm not here to condemn you for things, but I love Halloween and my children. Come and talk to me. I have children too as well. And I'm sure people around this congregation have children and have chosen not to celebrate. They've chosen to set themselves apart. So today we're going to be talking about Jesus being a light. Again, it's quite fitting, isn't it? in this time. So I'm just now going to speak where, it's, where, where we're going to use the scripture today. When Jesus spoke again to the people, and this was just after a woman was caught in adultery. A woman had just been caught, caught in adultery, and then Jesus again spoke to him again. He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. 
here you are appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I come from and I know where I'm going. This is a great I am. Remember, I am, stop, the light of the world. I am the all, the beginning and the end. God says, I know where I'm coming from, know where I'm going. Most of us, I'll be honest, even some as Christians, and we should know, but mostly we don't, sometimes, I don't know where we're going. I'm still not sure. Jesus is sure. I know I created the foundations and I'm going to create new heavens and the earth. I know. No doubt about it. I know. So my testimony is valid, even if it was on my own. But you have no idea where I've come from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are true because I'm not alone. I stand with the Father who has sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. Here you can see the Father and Jesus there, so it is true. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witnesses is my Father who has sent me. Then they asked him, where is your father? You do not know me or know my father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would also know my father. So please, I hope you're listening to some of this scripture. If you want to know God, it is through Jesus Christ. We saw last week, I'm the way, the truth, the light. There is no other way. We as evangelical Christians in this church say, Jesus is the way. Any good gift, anything that comes from above is from Jesus, not just, oh, it could be from anyone. Sometimes it is sad. I have seen people being prayed for, but sometimes people forget about the gospel. They're all into some of the healings. I've seen it. I, I hear, and it sometimes, and I hate to sort of uh, be condemning with other churches, but sometimes there are these churches who are, set, uh, who are seek-friendly churches. You take the healing, you take the blessing, but they don't want to give you Christ, which can be a stumbling block, as we'll find out. It's not easy. And Christ will give you judgment if you are under the law of yourself. But if you're under the law of Christ, there is no condemnation. So remember this, that again, it's all about Jesus. And it's all about knowing the Father through his Son. No other way. And we learned that last week. Thank you. He spoke these words while teaching them in the temple courts near the place where his offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because the hour had not come. And I'll leave it there for the, for the light. One thing I want to have a look at, we, I want to look at today, and even ask you this question. When you hear the word, I am the light of this world, what comes to your mind? When you hear the word, Jesus saying, I am the light, what comes to it? And I'll be honest, none of you are wrong, but I think in this content, Jesus is saying, yes. The light of the resurrection. The light of the resurrection. Okay, that's right, that's real. The light. Anyone else want to shout out? I don't mind. Enlightenment, enlightenment, yep, illumination, yep. Truth. The world is darkened. None of it is wrong. But I want to say what he said here, that what the Jewish people have known. This is a prophecy which we see in the Old Testament. I want to show you where this would bear witnessing in the Old Testament to the to Christ himself and you'll see the word light a lot this is in Isaiah I the Lord have called in the called you righteous I will take hold of your hand I'll keep you and make you to be a covenant for the people a light for the Gentiles amen to that as we know and we've heard from David I think some time ago that we know that God's chosen people were the Israelites but then by God's grace and mercy, he brought us in. At one point he said, I blind the Jewish people so the Gentiles can come in. And then this is something that even I str struggle sometimes. And then it says, amount of Gentiles when they're saved, then the, the, the uh, sight will be received. Again, so there's, and we're seeing it now, we're seeing obviously converts to Judaism, people from Judaism converting and seeing Messiah and saying this is Yeshua Mashiach, this is the Messiah. So again, but for us, 
the light for the Gentiles. Even back in the Old Testament, it was saying, Gentiles, you will be crafted in. Don't worry. I'm dealing with my holy people first, but you will be grafted in. And you see it here. And it's obviously about Christ. Let's see some other uh, scriptures I want to show you. He says, it is too small for a thing you to be my servant to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those in Israel I've kept. I will also, again, same thing. So not just, not just look after Israel. I will also make you a light for the Gentiles that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. So here we go, everyone everyone i will start with and finish and we as david has talked before i still have to promise the jewish people we cannot be arrogant and say it's all about us uh -uh. god still has a promise to restore the jewish people to himself and we which is lovely have been crafted in as gentiles and you have salvation too and i hope everyone can say amen, amen. And then here, arise and shine, for the light has come. The glory of the Lord rises upon you. What you said about the light is not wrong, but I read this in content, and the light is salvation. You'll see the whole series of I Am is about salvation. That's all it's really about is coming back to him. Yes, and forgive me for saying it, there are goodies along the way. <laughs> I'll say that, and I hope you don't. it's not being... Uh, sacrilegious there but yes God wants to give you life to abundance and we know he will give you life he will direct you light to the path but generally the one thing he wants to do is give you salvation this is the greatest gift if we didn't have any healing if we had nothing we have salvation and we should never lose sight to that and there are people who have not been healed in their body physical body and they're still raising their hands, hands and saying Jesus is Lord and that is our amen. Yes, Jesus tells us to pray for healing. But there are times we don't know the will of God for their lives. And God may want to use where they are to witness to others like-minded. Because it is sometimes easy when you've got all the riches. Just like Job and Satan went up to Job and said, ah, he's got everything. Of course he's faithful. And there could be some Christians here that have had abundant life and your witness may not be as powerful. Or your witness may be for the people who are like you, have got everything, and you still say, I'm weak. So you witness to them. Then there's other people who have nothing. You can witness to them. So God uses everything for good. You know this. So this is the Old Testament prophecies. Let's just give me some background. Then we see in the New Testament, we see here Simeon, that he actually from, from Jesus' birth knows he's the light before his ministry even starts. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was a righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. <coughs> it has been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask you again, how was it revealed? Was it revealed by your intelligence? No. Your philosophy? Winning arguments? No. No. And sometimes as Christians, if you just preach the cross and let the Holy Spirit deal with it. And sometimes when you feel like you've lost, as I said before, you probably have won. Sometimes, again, your words will feel foolish. Spiritual things for the unspiritual mind are foolish. But when you're spiritual, you understand it all. So by the Spirit, he said he would not die before he had seen the Lord, the Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts when the parents brought the child. See here, a child. Jesus to do for him what the custom was required. Obviously, it's circumcision. Simon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now be dismissed for your, for your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in sight for all nations. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel. It's lovely, isn't it, that we've actually heard a lot of word Gentile, Gentile, Gentile. So again, if you're involved in the Jewish covenant as well, that God's going to uh, fulfill that, you're not alone. So I know sometimes there is that argument, and I'll be honest, I've obviously worked in in uh, Israel amongst the Jewish people and sometimes 
People as Christians are like, oh, no, 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 we are now the remnant. It's us. It's all about us. And then you may even get, and I've seen it on the other side, the other extreme, the, 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 the Gentile trying to be Jewish and saying, oh, 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 no, 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 no. You're loved as a Gentile. You see it there. You're loved as a Gentile, and they are loved as Jews. Let's put it like that so it's no arguments. And I've seen it, as I said, when I was in Israel, I saw it, where Christians sometimes want to be Jewish. I'm like, you're not Jewish. You're a Gentile, and you have the, we have the same God because we're crafted in, the same light of salvation. So here was prophecy fulfilled in Luke for the people. Jesus then also, as we know, John the Baptist, he was talking. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness and testified concerning that light, so that through him all may might believe. He himself was not the light. It's obviously about John. He came only as a witness to the light, and the light is salvation. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Again, the true light. There are false lights out there. You know that even when he said the true light, there are many lights you will see. Even for some people celebrating Halloween, they think that's the greatest light. It's very sad, actually, when I was in America, I found this figure out that Halloween is one of the most celebrated festivals. So sad. It surpasses Christmas. Halloween is the most. And when you go there... It's, it's huge. When I was living there, I didn't want, didn't want to go to my house because your house would be knocked on. It was huge. And, if, and again, if, if you, if, yeah, I was surprised it being number one. He was in the world and through the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own, as we know, the Jewish people, did not recognize him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave them the right to become children of God. If you don't get anything of this message today for believing in Jesus being the light, you know the Father, you know the resurrection, and you are called children of God. It's not about your merit. It's not about what you've done or haven't done. And we'll talk about later in a minute, but literally here, if you believe and receive him, you are a child of God. Even if you've got a bad day today, if you're still in your badness and still say, I believe in his name, I confess my sins to him, because I'm a weak sinner, he will forgive you, and I'm still a child of God. You are all children of God, not by what you've done, but what Jesus has done. And then you've got Jesus' own testimony, as you said before. <clears throat> when Jesus spoke, I'll just say it again, when Jesus spoke to, again to people, I'm the light of the world, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Now, we can look at this and go, well, that's, that's easy. We know Jesus is a light, so there must be darkness. If you receive Jesus, you have life to abundance, John 10.10. 10. But not that easy, is it? Not that easy. And I want to sort of read the stumbling blocks that we put upon ourselves. And I put this one here. Jesus tells us to walk in in the light. So obviously this is a conscious decision we have to make. Walking in the light. I can say it, and I know your answer, but then obviously if that's your, I can ask one question. Do we profit in walking in the light of Christ? Do we profit? Yeah. So why don't we do it every day? And again, I'm, not, I'm just saying it because we all going to say, yeah, of course, of course we profit. Of course Jesus is a light, of course. So if it was like that, if we got it, then why have some of us, not all of us, feeling something's down sometimes? Feeling that life isn't, isn't what it should be. We're not living in that light of life. What is the problem? This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people have loved darkness instead of the light because of their deeds are evil. Now let's face it, people. And this sound, may sound controversial, but I think you understand where it's coming from. Sin is good, isn't it? Sin is pleasurable. And if you say it's not, then why you do it? Let's face it, the sin we do is good. Or sometimes it's an entitlement. I'm entitled to be angry at that person, even though it says love your neighbour, but I've got entitlement. I'm going to be rude to them. 
So we know that sin, and as someone said it a long, long time ago, we've got to give that up to God as a sacrifice. A sacrifice. Because all of us are holding on to stuff that's making us live in the darkness. You know what it is, there's no condemnation, but that's what the Holy Spirit does. If you want to know how the Holy Spirit is working your life, it comes and reveals your sin. And it does that, it just comes to reveal your sin. And I think, this is me personally, I personally think that God wants to deal with our sin before we walk anywhere else. Just like a good father and a good mother, if you had children. Forgive me if there are people who have not had children, but if you've had children, sometimes you want to give your children things, but you've got to, if they've done something wrong, you've got to deal with that. That's got to wait. It's not you're not going to give it to them. It's like, you know what, I'll give that gift to them later. I've got to deal with this. Because God's got a great inheritance for us. But I almost believe that our sin is stopping us having life to eternal, having life to the fullest, because we love the evil we do. Some of it, we love it because we're in it. We enjoy it, and some of it, if we're not careful, and I'm guilty of this too, that sometimes we're almost got a, got a, a picture in our, in our head of what we're going to do. Sin doesn't just happen like that. It becomes a thought. Then it may become a look. Then you're like, I'm going to try a little bit. Oh, that tastes good. And then you're wrapped in it, and then you're wrapped up in guilt. Because darkness, you can't see the light. But remember, I am the light. I am means I'm ready. I'm always there. The light is here if you like it or not. And the closer you get to Christ, it's going to expose your sin. It has to. Because God doesn't have any part of sin. And as Samuel said to me, which was ugh, quite fitting but hard, if we've got the Holy Spirit within us, when we're sinning, we're tarnishing that. We're tarnishing that. God is actually with us when we're doing our sin. That's just mind-boggling. You know, if we can actually imagine when we're doing our stuff, and let's imagine, no one's an out of body experience, but Jesus being the Holy Spirit, and then he's sort of kind of like sitting at a seat and watching us. Just watch it. Watching our sin. Is that kind of, in a way, grieving the Holy Spirit? Grieving? Are we bringing grief on the Holy Spirit? I think we are. We're grieving him. Because God's saying, what are you doing? I want you to live in the light. Come to the light. So again, this is a verdict. So for some of us who don't know Christ, or for some of us who do know Christ, we've got to realise what we are doing is not profitable. We've got to try to hate our sin, which is hard sometimes. And sometimes it helps me. I don't know if you've ever done this before, that just before you're going to sin, picture what it's going to feel like afterwards. <laughs> I've done that before, and that's helped me. Okay, if I do this and do this, I'm going to feel really guilty afterwards. Is it worth it? No. And that's what you've got to do, if that helps sometimes. If anything, if anything, capture it before. Don't even go down that road. When you get that thought, dear Lord, help me. Because you know it, it, it takes time sin. It doesn't just happen. And sometimes, as I said, sometimes we even plan our own sin. You know, if you, if you, you know, you have a problem maybe with alcohol and you know you shouldn't be doing it. I'm not saying alcohol's wrong, but I'm saying if you have a problem with it and you know God's told you maybe not to, so you to plan it, <laughs> so it's not, it doesn't just happen. You've got a plan to go to the off license, go and get it, go to the pub. So you've got time to say, God, help me. Because God does tell us any burden, anything, any temptation sees to man, there will always be a way out, Always. And I know if people, and that's why I would love us to get to this position, I know when we start confessing or groups and we confess our sin, the, the sin, the victories I want to hear is in our sinful nature. Seriously, that can be a great testimony. It's hard because it's a sacrifice. Imagine if I said to people, would anyone like to hear to come and share how you've confessed your sin and how God's healed you from something? It, that would be a sacrifice to you to come up. But I'll guarantee you, you'll be blessing others through it. Because they'll be like, wow, really? Them too? Yes, we all fall short of God's glory. Everyone who does evil hates the light. This is what's sad. So in one way, you just said the light's good. We kind of are hating the light. God, God I, I'll say to my, my wife, I'll say God is kind of Asian. There's no middle. It's yes or no. We're the grey ones, but my wife is either yes or no. And God's the same. If you don't like the light, 
then you must hate it. No, I don't hate you, God. Then why are you doing it? You say that to your children sometimes when you're mourning. Stop doing that. I did it to my son one day and he really was sad. I said, son, why are you doing that? Do you want to upset me? I said, do you do it at school? No, I don't do it at school. So why do you do it here? I don't know. And I've said, all I said is, I just feel sad that they don't know you that well. And I do. They only know you for five years, maybe. I've known you for almost 11. And you, you're respecting them more than you are me. His face just dropped. Same with God, isn't it? Same with God. He loves you so much. He's given us the cross. He's given us the light. He said you'll be children of God. But then what most of you fear, you fear that your deeds will be exposed. I hate to say this, but I think sometimes in God's loving wisdom, God will expose you. I've heard it before, and you may have heard it, especially with great ministers, you thought, and then all of a sudden they get exposed. God does expose sometimes because he wants you to be free. The truth sets you free. And I've heard ministers who have got caught. I think one guy was in, in Canada was there and, and he got exposed. So I won't go into detail. And it was very harsh. And he said, I'm so glad I got exposed because now I can be free. People can help me. Yeah? People can help me. Because most of us, let's face it, when we sin, we, as I said before, we do it alone. We think no one can see us. Funny, isn't it? We say, God is everywhere. <laughs> but you can't see me, God. I'm going to go in my room. You can't. How pathetic is that, really? And I, I'm guilty of doing that myself. Don't worry. I'm guilty. God, you're present. We know you're in this building. But somehow we've got these secret places at home where we do our sin. And we think he's not there. <laughs> Sorry, Lord. That's me as well. And I'm sure that's most of you. I'm sure that's most of you. So don't worry. And again, don't condemn yourself. But God will. And you fear. But a lot of people who don't know Christ, they fear that God is an angry God. God I think God loves when we confess our sin. I think that's a fragrance. I think that is pure worship. That's a fragrance. We don't think of that. You know, imagine if we had one time a, a service, let's have a sin offering, and we're all going to share our sins. Uh, again, that could be interesting, but God would love that. Don't worry, you're scared, don't worry, I'm not going to do it, because then I'd have to be part of that as well. Don't worry. Do that in home groups. That's what home groups are for. I'm not going to ask you to expose yourself. But, but if God calls you to, you're more than welcome. You're more than welcome, because God, I've been in prayer meetings where that's happened, where God has spoken to people, and they've just said everything, and then all of a sudden, he speaks, and he's weeping in his sin, and then it's like, how are you doing? And you're like, wow, he's encouraged me, to, and then all of a sudden, we're all weeping together, and I hope people have had the experience in a home group where you've shared. If you haven't, that's what home groups are about, where you come to, and if you haven't had this Christianity then I'll be honest, it's another thing I want to show you here. Or we'll do this later. But whoever lives by the light, truth comes into the light, so that you may be seen plainly what they have done. This is one thing I want to start here as well. If you want to be a blessing to other people, your life is not just your own. I think we all know that. Your life is a witness to other people. So if you want your work to be shown of your good deeds, then live in the light. Share your friends sometimes, like even Halloween, take a stand. There may be things that you can say, I'm sorry, I can't do that, that's, that's evil for me. Huh? We are the light because you know in the last days, evil becomes good and good becomes evil. These are the last days, you're seeing it. All you've got to do is now just watch, the, just watch any program and you, and you can be shocked. I was thinking even the other day, very interesting, watching YouTube. Have you noticed on YouTube, there, they, can, they can use any kind of language. There's no age restriction. I was actually shocked the other day. I was listening to one YouTuber, and a very famous guy, if you're young here, called KSI, and he was just effing and blinding. And there was no age restriction. And this guy is loved by many in children as young as four or five years old. So sad. That's what you come against. And they're like, he's so cool, man. Haven't you seen the last days where evil become cool? Maybe even some of you in the past, and I've done it, I'll be guilty when I first became a Christian, I would still use dirty language to, to everyone would laugh and still have them crash jokes because I didn't want to be different. But God calls us to be different. He calls us to be. And if we suffer with Christ, we get blessed with Christ. We raise with Christ. 
Okay, so the light, I swear it's almost there now, the life exposes our sin. This is the message we have heard from him, declares God. God is light, in him there is no darkness. Remember, this is what I would say to you. If there is darkness in you right now, you're not going to feel the light. The light's there for you, but if you're not feeling all warm and fuzzy, <laughs> maybe because of some sin God wants to deal with. That may be a warm and fuzzy feeling right now. There may be sin in your life that God's like, get rid of it. Please, get rid of it. There's no condemnation. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk, this is now for the Christians, and yet walk in darkness, we lie. You see how God is black and white here? You know, oh, I need a little, a little sin. I don't, I don't like my neighbor next to me, but that's okay. God will be, God will be all right with that. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, and if you look at the fruit of the Spirit, that may help you. Love, joy. If you don't mean love, joy, peace, patience, yet we walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. So now you're liars before God, liars before man, and as I said before, and then you probably wonder sometimes, why is my witness not strong? Because your lifestyle is not a witness. Trust me, when your lifestyle is pure and different. I don't care who you are, you will get people coming up to you and you'll be surprised. I remember being, a, I think, in college when I became a Christian and I did stand out and people were laughing and joking. But it's funny, there'd be odd times, oh, can you pray for me? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, I hear, I hear, yeah. They knew you were different. When everyone was gone, the crown was God. Can you pray for me? I, I hear it all the time, oh, you're a Christian, can you pray for me? I don't really believe, but can you pray for me? They see something in you. When was the last time someone said, there's something about you, you're different? If you get that, then you can say, yes, it's Jesus. As I said, you've heard before, I had that, I had that a long time ago. Sorry, Lord, forgive me. But I had that a real long time ago, and this guy couldn't work me out. As I said before, if you're new, it's a new story. If you're old, forgive me. And when I said, you want to come to church? He went, oh, he just went, oh, son, that's it. Huh? Yeah, I'm coming. I've been working you out. There's something different. And I'm not boasting here. I'm glorifying God. I'm glorifying God. And he, straight away, with that one invitation, he came. He said, I've been watching you. People are watching us. We're meant to be the light. We're meant to be the light. You are the light of the world. Now this is about us. We are now to be called the light of the world. This is, I, I said to my son, actually, and I'm actually my, my wife, sorry. I said, what do you think the main purpose of our Christian life is? And I think it's for all of us. Our main purpose is our lives to glorify God. That's it. If you're thinking about what's my call in life, your call is your life is to be a living sacrifice and pleasing to God so people look at you and you're glorifying God. That is it. That is it. And you see it here. You are the light of the world. And this is what we're saying we have to do. Neither do people put a light or lamp and put it under a bowl. Sometimes we say, oh, there's so much darkness. We're kind of like this. We cover ourselves. Oh, there's so much darkness. Oh, there's so much darkness. You're the light. <laughs> then get up and be the light and speak out. And sometimes you're sowing. I know you may say, I don't see. Sometimes you're sowing a seed. Trust me. The, sow, the seed you may have sowed 20 years ago to someone may come back. Nothing is ever, ever wasted. That persecution you get, it's not wasted. Do you think the saints' persecution was wasted? All the ones who have died before us, is that wasted? No. None of their death is in vain. And I really believe that what we do will never, ever, if it's in Christ, in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see the good deed and glorify the Father in heaven. That is what it's all about. Doing good deeds from God will glorify God in heaven. That really is it. And as I say here in, in John 3.21, but whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that you may be seen plainly again what they have done and has been in the sight of God. So if you want to be a living witness, it's so basic, it starts with your personal walk. I would guarantee you, light, like anything, especially if you're uh, in Cambodia, you know it's light, light attracts mosquitoes. 
your light will retract. Maybe your mosquito friends, I don't know, joking, they feel like it's sucking your blood. But in theory, your light will attract people. Your light will guide people. Your light will expose things. There may be a, ch- a, a place that if you're living in holiness, and I'm, it's happened to me a few times, probably some are here, where you're there, and I met my friends and became a Christian, they didn't want to do things around me. They said, we can't do things around you anymore. I said, no, it's okay. No, we just feel convicted. Didn't say anything. You'll be surprised. Your witness is your lifestyle. That's it. And I guarantee you, with your lifestyle, if you can set yourself apart from the world, not be as the world, but set your part and live as Christ, trust me, people will come to you. So I'm now going to conclude again. When Jesus spoke to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have light, will, be the, will have the light of life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the light of our life. We thank you that you are the salvation of our life. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray and help us, Heavenly Father, to hate what you hate, which is sin. Help us, Heavenly Father, the sin that we are caught up in because we are all full short. We're all sinners. Help us, Heavenly Father, to show your light on this sin and know that we are children of God. There's no condemnation. If we confess our sins, you will truly forgive us. But Lord, we've got to confess. So Heavenly Father, if there's anything in our lifestyle that is stopping the light shining in our hearts, may we confess them to you, even now. And Heavenly Father even says that when we receive this light, when we receive you, what is amazing is also our community gets stronger. You said that when we come to get, when we find you, we will meet with each other. So Lord, if we want to be more in community, help us to be drawn to you first, because you draw us back into the community. And Lord, if we're hiding from community, forgive us, because that is not of you. So, Heavenly Father, you being the light of this world, be in our hearts, be in our minds, and be in our walk. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, yeah, good to get the answer. Okay, okay. We, I think we've got one more song. Can you pass me that? I think we've got one more song to conclude. And please stay for tea and coffee. It would be lovely if you can stay for tea and coffee. And if you need prayer, I'm around. James around. Hello, Sunday School. I'm glad you are back. We're waiting for you guys. Excellent. No, no, don't be sorry. It's all right. Where's James? Is he around? Thanks, James. You're on now. Okay, so we have a little praise praise party at the end to finish our service this morning. We're going to be singing God's Great Dance Hall. So please do stand, have a bit of a boogie. We've got children playing the instruments. Freedom. Um.
I feel alive, I come alive, I am alive from God's great dance flow. I feel alive, I come alive, I am alive from God's great dance flow. Take me, this is all I can bring. You never stop loving us. service out so if you'd like to go out the back for teas and coffees it's been great to see you all thank you very much